Hey, good afternoon, Michael Wynn, Chief Digital Officer at Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. Happy Monday, President's Day. Uh, glad you guys can join me. I hope you're uh, enjoying the day at home or uh, not distracted by uh, people who are working and calling. Uh, nevertheless, so what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about how to reverse engineer keyword industry data Right, so we want to we want to find what are the keywords that people are using in search to find what they're looking for and how it relates to your company or business, uh, so that we can create effective digital marketing campaigns and make sure that we have contextual content at scale to reach those um, different segments of our target audiences. So first of all, I think we need to make sure that we understand that Google um, as the primary top uh, search result platform, understand that they have a product that they want to deliver to those who are using it. Um, and what that means is that they are going to ensure that those um, links, whether they are in the paid content area and labeled as an ad or if you are in the organic ranking, in other words, you're listed just below the maps uh, in you know place number one, number two, number three, and so on, in an organic way, in other words, you're not paying for that placement, uh, Google has a product to deliver. And so one of the things that they use when you look at you know, obviously, you know, if, if I am an automotive company and I want to get my product in front of people, um, let's say I, I'm, I'm trying to run a special on trucks, um, you know, people who are looking for Ford trucks, Chevy trucks, Dodge trucks, you know, all those kind of searches um, are going to are going to be competitively bid upon. Um, but how much you're willing to pay is only one part of how Google thinks about giving you um, number one and number two top positioning in that ad placement as well as uh, your organic ranking. But let's talk first about um, when you see an ad up there, if you're not aware, it is not by mistake, right? So uh, one of the things that Google does when deciding who's going to get top billing for those ad spaces on the search results is they look at a, a metric called quality score. Quality score is basically their way of, of looking at, number one, um, how, has, how does your ad um, perform compared to historical information in terms of the click-through rate? In other words, how many times is your ad shown versus how many times does someone see it and then click on it? That would be the click-through rate. Uh, as well as the ad relevance. So, you know, if, if, if I were a roofing company and I was bidding on the word shingles, but yet I had someone typing in shingles for children and clicking and going to my roofing company website, that would be an example of bad relevance, right? So again, if that were the case, you would actually want to label that as a, as a negative keyword in your campaign. Anyway, uh, so again, quality score is click-through rate, relevance, and then lastly is landing page experience. So yeah, Google really does care what your website looks like, and they care if it's number one, mobile optimized and mobile friendly. So if we take all of that into consideration, then the people who are in the top performing squares when it comes to ad space, and also this all has a, a role to play in organic ranking as well, is if we use a tool, and I'm going to use uh, SEM Rush, so that's that our S is in Sam, E is in Edward, M is in Mary, Rush, SEM Rush. You can go to uh, semrush.com and learn about that tool. They have a free uh, account that you can set up if you're a small business or entrepreneur and want to learn more about that tool. Um, you can do it one time, they give you limited access, but you can at least get started and get a peek inside of when I talk about digital, um, you know, industry data, you know, keyword industry data, you can get an idea. So if you put in, uh, you know, landscaping as the keyword, you're going to get all kinds of information about 
how that phrase or keyword um, it impacts or, or how it performs and what people are doing, what they're looking at, what they're clicking on, how Google is, is displaying this information, and it's critical. So most people use these tools when they're trying to put together um, a Google AdWord campaign or when they're thinking about their search engine optimization, but today I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about today is if you've run ads before, whether they're on Facebook or Google, um, and and you know you're you're maybe the, the needle's not moving quite as much, or or maybe you're experiencing um, ad fatigue, and and ad fatigue is you know you're not changing out the creative, you're running the same thing over and over and over again, and when I mean over and over again, I can literally mean a couple of weeks or you know some. You know, set it and forget it and let it roll for, for longer periods. But ad fatigue is when, you know, people start seeing it and they're like, yeah, I've seen that, and they keep on moving. They, they don't stop and, and, and click and, and take the next step. So if today what we're going to talk about is reverse engineering that data, looking at those keywords and looking at those ads, knowing that one of the most smartest algorithms in the planet have already taken into consideration, number one, the experience that the end user is having when they click on the ad. Number two, it's relevant to the search that someone put in. And number three, people are clicking and going to that site. So, I mean, that's like three ingredients to know that they're doing it right. So here's what we wanna do. We wanna take that information. So we'll use the tool like SEMrush. We'll put in our keyword and we'll go to that tool and we'll look at what are the top 40 organic listings? And we wanna go in and look at each one of those organic uh, listing pages, those are website pages that are related to the, the keyword that we're interested in for our business and look at that information, read it, um, think about it from, don't think about it as this is your competitor or you know, this is someone that, uh, you know, is an industry leader. Try to put yourself in the shoes of someone who, who would be uh, a potential new client for you. And, and imagine if they were reading it. And then take a minute and think about what's your value proposition. How does your value proposition differ or, or supplement or accent that particular piece of content? So, that experience in and of itself, just thinking about how you're, you're really starting to get an idea of what other people are reading and what they're being exposed to in a, in, a, in a successful method when you're looking at that. And then when you kind of layer over the top of that with your value proposition, now you need to know what your value proposition is for sure, right? Your value proposition is why should I do business with you? Why should I choose your product over someone else? You know, it is really your, um, you know, the differentiator. What, what makes you unique? What makes you different? Why should I pick you over someone else? So when you're reading and observing that content that is being populated at the top when it comes to your industry and your topics, and you put yourself in the shoes of, of a potential client for yourself, and then you lay over that contextual layer of here's my value proposition, then you can draft new content for your ad creative, for your website, for your Facebook ads, for your pay-per-click campaigns, for your email campaigns, for your blog content. It all has um, you know, a ramification. Then second is once you've looked at those organic listings, the next thing to do is look at, and then again, these tools give this to you for free. Um, look at the top performing, and they'll show it to you uh, in, um, in SEM Rush where the top performing ads are. Again, why you wanna look at that is because those have, have passed the test, the Google test, that they are, are performing with a top quality score, meaning their, tops, their, their quality score, they are tops in click-through rates, relevance, and landing page experience. So guys, it's not just enough to have great ad copy. It's not just enough to have um, the right budget. 
It's not enough to have a great website. You have to have all of that working perfectly in concert together in order to reach the person uh, and, and potential new clients that you're trying to reach. So um, once, once, once you've done this exercise, you know, this is, I mean, and this is going to think about it. Let's say on average, the, the article that you look at is five minutes, right? and you wanna read the top 40, all right? So 40 times five minutes, uh, 200 minutes. Um, so we're talking about three plus hours to just do an analysis. Um, and then the time that you're gonna take to um, kind of review that information and then think about it in the context of your value proposition, right? And then draft that content. So. Once you've done that, then you can tick up the next four things, which is to plan your attack, okay? Um, so you, you've gone through, you've looked at the organic listings, you've looked at the top performing ad copy, then you've drafted your own content that really illustrates your value proposition. Now, the next thing you need to do is think about segmenting your client groups, you're segmenting your target audiences based on their interests, based on their motivators, based on their geogra uh, the, the geography, where they're located, um, and start thinking about that. So segment out your group. And then once you've segmented out those groups, take that content draft that you've written and make sure that you contextualize the copy for that segment. So you might say, oh, are you in the, uh, you know, South Florida area and looking for a roofing company? You know, literally setting up that 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 geographical mention in the copy again, and having a landing page specifically for that particular um, you know uh, user that's going to click on that ad is going to have an impact on their experience. Okay, and we know that Google already says, "Hey, man, if you don't have that right, you're not doing it right." Right. So whether or not we have a pay per click campaign or not that experience is important that we should keep it in mind. So we're gonna segment our groups, we're gonna contextualize our copy and creative, then we're gonna choose the right format. So do we want visual, right? We know there's three ways people consume content. They watch it, they read it, or they listen to it. My recommendation, guys, in 2019, you should have a piece of creative for all three of those uh, uh, consuming methodologies, and you should have a contextual piece of content for each target group or audience um, for each one of those methods. So you, you should have a video um, for that contextual message for that audience um, and, and all those variations. And then you should have the, um, the visual, then, you know, so you want graphics with call to action, really high impact, connect with emotions, anger, inspire, and all. We've talked about that before. Um, you know, and so then once you've selected the right format, then you're ready to go on to the platform. So then you've got, you know, going on to YouTube and deciding if you're going to do pre-roll or deciding if you're going to just take that video and upload it directly into Facebook and run uh, video ads against visual ads versus carousel ads. So it's it's once you have the, the micro format selected and and each piece is contextual and segmented to the audience, then you can go platform by platform, plug in your audiences and run your ad sets. And that my friends is how you reverse engineer keyword industry data so that you can have effective digital marketing campaigns. Otherwise you're just throwing money away and Google really wants you to do that. They want you to pay more for your AdWords um, because you're not doing it right and you're getting a bunch of irrelevant things and you're paying through clicks that you shouldn't even have. Um, but that's, that's what they want. They, you know, they want, they want your money. Um, so be smart and, and don't do that and understand what the rules are and make sure that your content uh, has a strategy around it. So um, yeah, so that's what we're talking about today, guys. I hope this has been um, some great advice for you as you start to think about 2019 content. Um, it is definitely about understanding, putting yourself in the shoes of your potential clients and consumers. Um, make sure you can feel and experience the, the, the internet the way they do and the way that they um, 
view your industry or your product or your company or your competitors um, by doing a search and seeing what happens and seeing what the results are and comparing that with what you want to do and what you want to accomplish in 2019 when it comes to growing your business and moving the needle uh, towards success. Guys, thank you so much. I hope you found this information helpful today. My name is Michael Wynn. I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, Division of RB Up and I am Associates, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot.